we, the church, need to believe God for a supernatural move of His Spirit. Do you believe that? I believe that Jesus came with a purpose, and we've really, this morning, I believe, in our hearts have lifted up that name. And I, and I honestly believe as a result of, of a people calling out to their God, that then God comes down. Because there is very, some very, very simple fundamental truths in the Bible, and God inhabits the praises of his people. And he comes down to touch us, and, and I, I believe that most of us in this house have already been touched by God. As the church goes, the nation goes. And we can see a lot of things that are going on. There's going to be a lot of silly laws that may be passed in the near future. But I believe that if we can rise up, and I was talking to Mike a little while ago about starting something like an intercession prayer group. I believe it's time to pray, time to get together. How many people in this house are in, would call yourself intercessors? Come on, how many? There's quite a few people already that we could get together. And, and my, my dream is to be able to then get other churches involved and uh, but start a leadership group where because intercessionary prayer groups can be the, the strangest things you've ever seen. They come up with some weird ideas and then they think that they can tr control the church. It's not for that at all. It's, it's to prayer and to break through and to smash and to pull down, uh, not to find out the hidden secrets, whether the pastor had uh, baked beans for dinner or not. Jesus left heaven to be born a man. He refers to himself as a son of man. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Who do you say that I am? He was his next question. And that's really the real question. Peter said, you are the Christ, you are the son of the living God. And then Jesus spoke some words that, that really re need to resonate in our minds. He said this, he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then he goes on to talk about building his church and, and the gates of Hayes will not prevail against it, about giving the keys of the kingdom. But I, I believe that we've got to understand that, that these things are not just in the natural. And if you're trying to build something in the natural, no matter what it is in the natural, it will fail. Because we need uh, today to have a fresh revelation. Jesus didn't show any signs of royalty, though he was the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He was born in a stable where there was no room for him. And I want us to just say this, if we can just challenge us, because only those who had a revelation from God himself really knew who he was. There were many, many people in churches, many, many people doing all kinds of things, but only those that had a revelation from God himself knew who he was. And I believe that we've got to be careful that we don't move away from the things of the Spirit to become politically correct or to have everything nice and neat and everything like that. Friend, it'll never be nice and neat in this house. I'm praying that God will do more than you and I could ever imagine or think. And he would blow our minds in an amazing way. I've asked Chris if he would, at the next lectures that he's doing in our ministry training school, is to speak to us and remind us about the great revivals that have happened, the great Finney revivals and the great moves of the Spirit the Azusa Street Revival. Friend, we need to hear about the Azusa Street Revival. And you see, as, as a minister and, and wanting to get messages or find something to talk about and, and share to be able to feed and, and minister life to your people, I rely very, very much on, the, on, on God Himself to help me, to reveal things to me. And it's amazing because... I sometimes get blown out of my mind 
as things that, that God just starts to show me, reveal to me, or even a piece of paper that comes across my path. And I, haven't, I found an old, old, old Bible that I haven't used for I don't know how long. And inside this Bible were, were some notes and different things. And one of them was on, on about a revival story from Dutch Sheets. And he started to talk about, uh, about resurgence of prayer and the prayer ministry. And, and actually, he was, there was a, a woman that had a vision of people that were prayers and the prayer ministry in the, in the church. And actually what was happening, it was like as if there was a great accident because all he could see was flashing lights as ambulances and things like that were there and people working on bodies and, and different ones were saying, there's, there's no life in it, there's no life in it. I can't find a pulse, I can't find a pulse. And the vision went on and the dream went on to say that these were the prayer warriors, that they died out and that there was this, this surge of death going through. As people were walking away from prayer for some other way to build the church. And I want to tell you this, the, the church will be birthed in prayer. The revival fires will be birthed in prayer. And I was really with our church, we were growing and developing in our prayer group as we went from 35 to 40 and different things like that. And I was believing God for 50 and then all of a sudden it seemed like winter came and people stopped coming. I really want to challenge people to, to go the little bit extra and start to pray and believe God again. Amen. And we'll make room for people that can pray. If you can't come at night, we'll make room for people to pray during the day. But just come and, and, and do this. And, and this thing was there and, and, and there was no life and, and, and they were talking. But they realized that the people that were working on these dead bodies or half-dead bodies were actually angels. And all of a sudden, one said, I feel a pulse. I feel a pulse. I feel life coming back. I feel, I've got a heartbeat. I've got a heartbeat. And the other said, what, what did you do? What did you do? What, what did you do? He said, I started telling this body about past revivals. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing that will gurgitate and start with the life and this fire of the Spirit as you start to talk about things of the Spirit. And friend, I want to tell you, when most Christians, when we come together, we talk about the problems, we talk about the negativities, we talk about the, the, the trouble that I'm going through. Friend, I want to tell you, I want to start talking about the victory of the cross of Calvary. I want to talk about the victory that I've won, amen, the battles that have raged in my life that I have overcome and I've triumphed over. And it was an interesting thing because in that same book was this. Australian apostle caught drunk in Dunedin Church. <laughs> when I looked at it, I thought, oh, how terrible. Australian apostle found drunk in a Dunedin Church. And praise God that I started to read a little bit more. And this was written by, by, by the way, by an, a, a journalist that came to the meeting, obviously. What people need today is the joy of the Lord. And we're getting it, says Neil Myers, International President of Christian Outreach Centre. <laughs> Mr. Myers is at present touring New Zealand and last night was at Dunedin COC Church. And what a time it was. People were lying all over the floor, laughing and acting as if they had just walked out of the pub, but it was not the pub. Remember, this is a journalist trying to express what's going on that hasn't got a clue what's going on. But this was no pub. It was, in fact, a local church. A church with a difference, it would seem. Mr. Myers himself was no better. <laughs> when asked what was happening, he could do, all he could do was roll around on the floor laughing and saying something about wine and grapes and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> However, previous to the laughter, he gave an hilarious talk, standing on chairs from time to time. 
and had the people in fits of laughter almost from the beginning. The question is, can this really be the church? Mr. Myers assured us, assured us it was. During the few moments, he managed to stay on his feet. It seemed a revival may be about to happen after all. What else could you see? Pastors and their congregations rolling around on the floor laughing. If you have not experienced this yet, come along. At least have a laugh. <laughs> there are other, other little stories on this page. But I really, it touched me and I started to remember that in 93, we had an outpouring of God's Spirit. And a lot of people, all they saw were people getting sort of drunk in the spirit. All they saw was what their natural mind could see. But I saw, I saw lives changing. I saw people that were transformed, changed forever. I saw people that, that broke through barriers in their lives that they had never been able to break through before. I saw people healed and delivered. I saw people laying on the floor, not only a, a laughing and that, I saw people with tears, buckets of tears, tears streaming down their face. Nancy's told the story and I've told the story of our seven-year-old granddaughter who was laying on the floor in one of those meetings and Nancy walked up and sat beside her as she was weeping her little heart out and sobbing. And Nancy said, what's going on, darling? And she said, Jesus just came and took my black heart out of me and gave me a new heart. There were things that were happening because, friends, it's all about a move of the Spirit. It's not about whether we get all of our doctrine straight and things like that. And I pray, God, that we do. But, friend, it's something about opening up our heart to what God wants to do. I can remember times there in meetings when I'd just lift my hands and hundreds of people would fall under the power of God. I saw some video clips of Reinhard Bonnke over in South Africa, over in Africa, where he was ministering to crowds of hundreds of thousands of people. And he would stand up there and as he would talk in his whatever language he had, and as the Spirit of God would fall, literally thousands upon thousands of people would fall under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Some laughing, some crying, getting healed, getting delivered. They had all their ushers that had to come in and pull people up because they were getting crushed at the weight of the people that were falling on top of each other. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for a revival. I'm hungry for a revival. And, and friends, sometimes when God comes, He doesn't come with, with the grace and airs that we think that He would come. When Jesus came, he didn't come with the royalty or the grace and the heirs that everybody thought he would come with. He came as a, as a man. He was born in a manger. People would have laughed at him and he grew up as a young man. He grew up there, but something happened to him. One day he was passing that river and, and as he passed that river, John touched him, baptized him in water. And as, as he was coming out of the water, he was baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Friend, if you haven't had a touch, if you haven't had an encounter, if you haven't had something there that changes your life forever, I want to encourage you to go down to the river. There's a man walking on the water. There's a man there with healing in his hands. There's, a, there's an anointing in the river of God. There is a river that flows from God above. Hallelujah. There is a river. It's filled with God's great love. There is a river. It's filled with God's power. It's filled with their, God's anointing. I want to tell you, friends, God is moving by His Spirit. And I want to tell you, He's going to shake the church until everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Because God's not a man that he should lie. I remember watching and seeing people's lives change. Hundreds upon hundreds. We went, we traveled, I don't know where, but literally thousands of people got touched by the power of God. Lives changed. We saw other miracles. We saw other things happening. I, I, some things there I don't understand, but people had gold dust all over their hands. Some had it on their faces. Some had it all over them. 
And one of the great problems is when, when God starts to move, the enemy tries to counterfeit it. And he's got his little workers in the, that are in the church there that start to counterfeit it and mess it up. And I can remember one man there that he saw this person with gold dust all over his hand and he looked at me and he said, I know where, where that came from. I said, where? He said, he's been eating corn chips. He's had his hand in the corn chip packet and he's got corn chip dust on him. How many people want to move of God? Come on, how many people really want to move of God? Do we, come on, lift up your hands. Father, we want to move of God. Come on, cry out to God. We want to move of your spirit, Lord. Oh, come again, come again in, your, in, in mighty power, my God. Come again and touch us and raise us up in Jesus' name. Jesus came with power and he came with authority. But he didn't, when he was born, he didn't have that. But something happened to him. He got filled with the power of God. He had an encounter with God. He had an encounter with his father when he, the promise, he got filled with the Spirit of God. And he went back into the synagogue. Friend, he would have gone into that synagogue many, many times as a young Christian, as a young Jewish boy. He would have been known to be in that church. They would have known him. This is Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Here's Jesus coming to church again. Coming in, coming out, going in, going out. But this day, something happened. This day was a changed man. This day, he had had an encounter with God. This day, he had been endured with that power. He had the Holy Spirit on him. Friend, all we need is the Holy Ghost. And he stood there and he spoke these words with authority. I know I've spoken this for the last three weeks, but friend, I want to, I want to exponentially put it into your brain. <laughs> I was wondering where I was going to get it in. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. I am a changed man. Hallelujah. I'm no longer little gentle Jesus coming in. Now I have the power. I have the authority. I am, hallelujah, who God says I am. And I now have power and authority to cast out devils and heal the sick and heal the brokenhearted because I'm alive. I've been touched by the power of God. I don't know about you, friend, we've got to go back. As I, re as I was reading that story, I remember that meeting. I remember it well. There was a man, they got so drunk. They had, remember Nancy, they had that little chairlift thing that you used to go down the steps. But this man was so drunk in the Holy Ghost that, he, that they couldn't. So his wife dragged him to boom, 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 down the steps. Strange thing, I remember Nancy getting so drunk in the Holy Ghost. She doesn't want me talking about it. We used to have to carry her out in a chair. I remember one time there, we were going to America and Jody was with us. Jody and I were sitting on the bed. Nancy was in the shower, having a shower. I said, I wonder if this works through walls. I blew like that, through the wall. Friend, I want to tell you, you can become a carrier of something so dynamic and so powerful that it will blow your natural mind. And I, and I said, I wonder if this works through the wall. And I, and I looked at Jody and said, mustn't work. Ten minutes, twenty minutes later, Nancy comes out of the shower. She said, I don't know what happened to me in the shower. She said, but I, my legs went underneath me. The anointing, friend. It's not something you can conjure up. It's not something you can make up. It's something that God does. God has anointed us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. He has anointed us with power and authority. And friend, it's time that the church started to release that anointing, started to get in the presence of God, lift up your hands and call on the name of the Lord and go and pray and seek His face until you find Him. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven. We know it so well. The trouble is we know so much. God wants us to become doers. Amen? Uh, but, but you've got no idea. It'll, it'll affect my, 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 what do you call it, time. <laughs> it 
There goes the church. There goes the nation. Don't blame, any, don't blame anybody else but the church if that yes vote goes through. Only the shepherds and the wise men. Why? Why? Why were they? Why were they? Why? Because they heard something and they knew something and they knew that something was going to happen. Friend, I want to tell you, if your feeler on the inside is starting to tell you something's happened, there's something's going on, if you've got a scratch on the inside that you can't scratch, I want to tell you it's time to get hold of God. It's time to seek His face. It's time to push through something and get a hold of God and get a hold of the anointing and get a hold of the victory of the cross of Calvary and go out there and despair play the power of God, lay hands on the sick, go out there and gossip the gospel and tell everybody what God's done. Oh, have you had an encounter? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing flow? Oh, have you been there? I've seen grown men. I've seen grown men when they know that they should get born again, when they know that they should surrender their life to Jesus. I've seen them there so, so, so weak because they're, they're, they're oh man, I, I, I don't want to go out the front there. I'm so glad I went out the front. I'm so glad I, I, I had to put down all my, my pride and my ignorance and everything else and I went out the front there and I stood out the front and I met Jesus, hallelujah. I met Jesus at the crossroad, hallelujah. I had an encounter with Almighty God. I didn't know what was going on, but something on the inside got inside me and I began to change. I had another encounter when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire, glory to God. Oh, the anointing that came into my life. I got another encounter when Robert Midgley prayed for me and touched me and, and I fell under the power of God, under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, it was an amazing, awesome encounter. I had another encounter at a children's camp when the Spirit of God fell on me, when the anointing came all over me and I was touched and I could have just done exactly what Jesus did. I could have gone back into that camp and I could have just stood there and I said, Neil went in there cutting the pumpkin up and the potatoes, but I'm coming back a different man because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and God has anointed me with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. Oh, you say, you putting yourself in the same position as Jesus? Yes. Because Jesus said, Neil, these things that I do, you can do also. Yeah. You keep putting yourself down, you stay down. It's time we started to rise up, amen. Time we started to get a little bit excited about this Christ, King of glory. Have you had a, an encounter? Have you been to Jesus? Have you, have you, have you, have, what have you got? Follow Jesus through the waters of baptism. Get filled with the power of God. Have an encounter. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Amen. Let the fire and the power and the anointing of Jesus. Haven't even got through my heading yet. Glory to God. I want you to open up your Bibles with me if you would. Oh, hallelujah. Two. Philippians chapter 2 to start with. Glory. Father, we just give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you all the praise. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Where am I? Here we go. Every page said lip. It says here in, in Philippians 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant. Taking, he took on the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. Of, of those, I'm, I'm, just, I'm going to the next page. So, Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth 
and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, over here in Ephesians, amazing book, Ephesians. Listen to this, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven, places in Christ. Let me read this again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Friend, you already have been blessed with every blessing. Everything that you need, you have right now. And this is what Paul prayed for us in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession of his praise, of his glory. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Friend, just a few people, a few shepherds, a few wise people that were aware because they had a revelation. But now here is Paul praying to you and I. Why? Because the doors have been opened. We've heard about doors being opened today. We've heard about captives being set free. But I want to tell you, not only is that door being opened for captives being set free, but also for God to penetrate and have an encounter with your life and bring revelation and understanding and whatever you need into your natural mind so as that the things of the Spirit become real to us. Friend, our natural mind is a natural thing, but there's a spirit man in there, the spirit man that needs to be lifted high in Jesus' name. Oh, he said, after I heard you, do not cease to give thanks for you, make a mention that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also on that which is to come. And he put all things under your feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church with his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Friend, this is, this, is this, this is the Bible preaching to you. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as others. Friend, I want to tell you, there is a natural drawing. There's something there that wants to captivate your time. There's something there that wants to fill your time. There's something there that wants to take all your time from the things of God, from your family, from whatever it is. Most multi-billionaires, by the time they reach their billions of dollars, they look back and their children have gone. They're in, in drugs, they're somewhere else, their wife's off with some other guy. And something there, they just find misery and strife. But friend, I want to tell you, it's not time to set your attention and your affection on the things of this world. It's time to set our affection and our attention on the things of God. Hallelujah because the things of this world will pass away. Your gold and your money will rust. What is more important? I had a little thought the other day. I wonder if the church in Guam, churches in Guam are full at the moment. People there that run their lives and all of a sudden when, when something tragedy comes, I've heard so many people say, Neil, I've got multi-millions of dollars, but I would give it all away to get back my health. I would give it all back again to get back my daughter and my son who are now lost in, in this and that. I'd give it back. Friend, set your attentions on the things of God. Don't allow things to distract you. 
We've all lived that way. Paul spoke to the Galatians. He said, oh, foolish Galatians. You started off in the spirit. Now you're going back to the flesh. The thing is, we can get touched by God and on fire for God, and all of a sudden there's that, the, the lust of the flesh and the enemy comes in and tries to take us away again. You say, Neil, we shouldn't be successful. No, I'm not saying that. But don't let it take its, its place of your God. Don't let it take its, the place of God. And God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his, man, in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It says over here in, cha in chapter, Ephesians chapter 3, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Friends, the Spirit of God began to move in the day of Pentecost. Pentecost went for so many hundreds of years where they moved in the power and the authority. But the enemy had to come in with a counterattack. And the religious thinking and the religious thoughts started to override and overtake the Spirit of God as people tried to come back to their natural thinking. And the, and the church that was raised was not of God. It was a church that brought in laws and regulations and things like that. The Bible speaks about it as the dark ages when the, the church plummeted away from the Spirit of God. Friend, we are living in a day today when the church is plummeting and moving away from the Spirit of God. We are living in this day again, this hour that we're living in right now. People are, are understanding and they're, they're seeing things. They're, they've got better ideas now. Instead of the blood, it's a cappuccino. Instead of this, it's something else. And all these other things take place. The church plummeted into a dark age. I want to tell you how the church as we know it is plummeting into a dark age. There was 120 people in an upper room that started a revival. And that revival was fizzed out as the, as the legalism and everything else came in and, and destroyed that what God had been doing. But somewhere the Spirit of God was still moving. And there was a man by the name of Martin Luther King that began to rise up as he listened to all the hypocrisy and all the rubbish that was going on. And he, and he said, this is not true. This is not what the Word of God says. And something inside him he started to breathe on the coal of his, of his life. Friend, we not, may not be many, but I want to tell you, something's got to blow on the coals of our life today that will cause us to rise above and not be sucked in by, by the world system and not be sucked in by what the world is trying to put us and what even the church life is trying to put on us right now. We've got to have a move of the Spirit, amen. We need a move of the Spirit. And this Martin Luther King went up there and he nailed his thesis to the wall. Bang! He said, the just shall live by faith. And he started a revolution and he started a move of God. And the charismatic move began and all these moodies and the different ones began to rise. And we've seen a great, a great move of God's spirit. Friend, I believe, I believe that if God could breathe on us again, if God could just breathe on us again, God breathe on me again, God breathe on on me again. God, don't let the fire go out. Don't let the fire go out, but my God, breathe again. Breathe again. Breathe again. Breathe again. 
breathe again on us, Lord. Don't let the fire go out. Don't let the fire go out. Mike Smith spoke a word to me one day. And that word still penetrates my life. Because I never, and I'm going to say this like this, I never saw, and it's with all humility that I say it, but he said, Neil, you are a revivalist. And when those words came in, I realized that I just have to keep stoking the fire. I'm going to keep preaching it until I can't preach anymore. I'm going to keep speaking it because I believe it until we start one of the greatest bushfires, until we start one of the greatest moves of God that this nation has ever seen. Not just us, don't, I don't mean that, but at least we're going to be part of it, amen. We're part of it. There's others, many, many others. There's many all over the country there that want a move of the Spirit. Move of the Spirit. Wonder not if you'll just stand your feet with me. Friend, can I say this? If you know, if you know you need to get right with God, do it today. Don't put it off. Be a man, be a woman of God. Allow God access into your life. Don't keep pushing him aside. Don't keep pushing him away. Don't keep putting it off to another day. Do it and it's done. Do it and it's done. Do it and it's done.